wholeness and balance vibrations family let me be the first to welcome you as a reflection of you i'm your brother curtis aru and this is the one tribe podcast home of the daily spectrum resonance where we share solutions relating to physical mental and spiritual well-being with sovereignty as our goal we discuss what works with the depth guests tribe no theory just raw unapologetic truth because truth is nature and we honor her gifts so leave your esoteric shoes at the door and let's make soul connections with every step forward let's keep vibing in resonance at top speeds because the portal is now open all right Wholeness and Balance Vibrations family, I'm your brother Curtis Haru, the reflection of you, and I'm joined here by the oldest loved one, oldest boy in the household, young son, Supreme RJ. Uh, let him introduce himself as he knows how to do. Hi, my name is RJ, and I'm the oldest son. Mm-hmm. But ours is different. Mm-hmm. So, so we today we're talking about astrophysics. And it was actually, you know, it's one something that, that came through the space is uh, actually a book written by Neil deGrasse Tyson. And I love the brother um, how he breaks down astrophysics and, and makes it so simple. Uh, I, I saw an interview with him that he did a while back. And um, I was at him I was out and I was like he broke it down so well. I was like, yo, I can, I can, I can do this. I can learn this. I can really, you know, digest what's going on, especially on top of uh, learning some of the med- medical, physical, um, going through the university, learning, learning more about metaphysics, you know, as above, so below. So getting more in depth with some of the as above um, uh, information or gnosis from the scientific perspective. So you can add all that to the pieces of the puzzle for the wholeness of uh, the understanding. So. I saw his book. He had two books. One written for or entitled, what is that? that? Astrophysics for Young People in a Hurry. Mm-hmm. And mine is called just Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. And uh, I got one for him because he's a, a great reader. And um, I love to see, I wanted to hear his perspectives and know what we learned from the discussions that we have. So we got one and started now reading it at night before we go to bed. And it just you know, opened a whole new world of conversation. and and uh in wonder so actually his is way more exciting than mine so i pause up reading this one more than i read mine um this one but definitely great weed so rj what's what's some things about astrophysics we've, we've learned so far so that the universe we read mm-hmm. so the universe so let me read a couple of pages. Okay. In the beginning, nearly 14 billion years ago, the entire universe was smaller than the period that is this, this sentence. How much smaller? How much smaller? Imagine that period was a pizza. Now slice that pizza into a trillion pieces. So, mm-hmm. you know how periods are in a book like very small period, mm-hmm. periods if you cut up, a, up into a thousand pieces that's how much the universe was it was hot mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very 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 hot hot and they talked about how cramped it was right yeah mm-hmm. and it was a thousand no, a trillion degrees Kelvin hmm. which is hot mm-hmm. it's hotter than the surface of the sun Crazy, crazy, and then so it was. It was the so universe was all in this it's one. It expanded, top, right? At rapid. Uh huh. And it cooled off as it expanded, mm-hmm. and so our universe came out of this little. Dot. Did you know how tight? If you're tight. Mm-hmm. If we just like like this right here. It's hot. Uh huh. It's, it's hot. It's hot and just exploded. So this event was called the Big Bang. Mm hmm. Big Bang, and then matter. So we got the many names of matter, antimatter, um, 
or like small portions within the book that you know makes it a little bit more fun to read. Talks about wormholes, black holes. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna read a couple pages. Really? Okay. okay. Today we call this event the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. And in a tiny fraction of a second, specifically one ten, one ten million tiny fractions. Mm -hmm. and one ten Millions. million trillion, tri one million million trillion 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 of a second. Trillion 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 of a second. Uh huh. And the universe grew tremendously. What do we know about the first instant of in the life? Of our cosmos, very little, un unfortunately. Today we have found the four basic forces controlled forces controlled everything from the orbits of planets to the little particles that make up our body. But in that instant after the Big Bang, all these forces were rolled into one. As ex as the universe expanded, it cooled. By the end of this blip of time. Which is known as among us scientists as the planet plant Planck era. Planck era. Named as German physics. Mm -hmm. Physics. German physicist. Ma Max Planck. One fourth wriggled free of the other. This force gravity holds together the stars and planets that force form galaxies. Keep Earth in orbit around Sun and prevents ten-year-olds from dunking basketballs. Mm -hmm. Among among other things, for a simple demonstration of gravity's constable, constant pull, close this book a few close this <laughs> book, lift it a few inches of the nearest table and let go. Mm -hmm. That's how, so that's gravity, how works. gravity works. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool, right? If your book does not fall, please call nearest astrophysics mm. and declare a cosmic emergency. <laughs> so, like this table, uh, if we drop it, mm -hmm. boom, it's fall. It's fall. But if it had like stayed floating, who was supposed to call? The gravity. <laughs> the nearest astrophysics. Yeah. And physicists, and let them know there's a. Uh, there's something amazing happening here. So, I mean, we talked. We did. In the uh, first few uh, instances, me and Uncle Don came to uh, universe. Me and Uncle Don came to school, and we were talking about the, the four uh, laws. Like one, um, where the strongest force is me and you. Like one, um, strong, strong and weak radiation. One, two, two. three. And me and you, With the strongest force is me and you. Hey. Yeah. And the strongest point is me and you. Yeah. Could you dunk on Mars? And that'd be one Let's of the assume seconds. you could actually get to Mars. Uh -huh. It's not the easy task. Mm -hmm. It's that you had a space suit that allowed you enough freedom of movement to let you jump. Mm -hmm. This strength of gravity on a given plane of Mars depends on its mass. Mm -hmm. If Mars is less massive than Earth, gravity is still a little more than one third as strong. So mm -hmm. there's a chance you could jump high enough. But I hope if you do manage to make it on like that day, you won't have to waste your time playing that. <laughs> right, there making will it more. Be many more extra things. An interesting thing to see and do. Once the four forces had split apart, we had what we needed to do. Uh -huh. So that was what was that little part say? A trillion of second since that's fast. I'll read one of mine. So one of my favorites, um, uh, well, so where I'm at now. I read The Greatest Story Ever Told. The Greatest Story Ever Told. That was the first two pages. Now we got to be precise here. 
All right, so mine, um, one, of, one of the major things that uh, stuck out was, um, uh, of course, the making of the universe. But one of the ones that you know, hit home is because we have actual device that adds this element to our water. And it's uh, learning more about the elements. And we have... Uh, no, we, we, we should put you over there, I think. So it's called the Hydrolux. And it adds hydrogen into the water. And you know, within the book, we talk about how uh, hydrogen is one of the the OG elements of the world of the, of the universe and how hydrogen is found uh, I think it's one of three um, gases that is a part of like 90% of all of the elements on the planet so when you have let's say more hydrogen in your body you're amplifying every other noble uh, element within your body that allowed you to soak up more nutrients, uh, activate uh, different parts of your genome that was not as, not as, let's say, uh, electromagnetically charged, you know, based on other levels of intake when it comes to water. So, hydrogen is phenomenal and it's found everywhere. And how, the, and, um, it was like talking about hydrogen in the core of the mass of Jupiter, that big dot and how under so much mass it behaves more like a conductive metal than a gas creating the most magnified magnetic field among the planets and like several so let's go let's read another part it says as we know hydrogen is the number one on the periodic table with only one proton in its nucleus hydrogen is the lightest and simplest element made entirely of made entirely during the big bang that one little dot that that heat you know of course little exactly like, it was ass mm -hmm. say so out of 94 naturally occurring elements hydrogen lays claim to more than two-thirds of all atoms within the human body and more than 90 percent of all atoms in the cosmos on all scales right down to the solar system and one of the things we also talked about too is um, um, was talking to aliens. That's, that's the one we had now. Talking to aliens. And we're talking about how light years work and how, like we said, we got a, a telescope that would go, you know, so, we're looking at what, uh, Jupiter or whatever planet. What, what we have. So we're talking about, mm -hmm. like, if we're aliens, we're controlling us in a game. Oh, yeah. So about you're that. in a game. In a game. Uh huh. Right. In a game. In, in a, a game, game. In a game. In a game. If you're playing game, if you're watching YouTube, right. gaming YouTube, in the game. In the game, because you're someone playing. Uh huh. So we're talking about how we're seeing things from different perspectives, and how like if this was a whole big game, and aliens like we're running, like controlling the whole thing, and we find ourselves. Um, in the big game and then in our own game within our lives and even playing video games like uh, Roblox or or something like that and even in the video games they have little games mini games within that game so you're in a game in a game in a game and being able to pull back and see all that from perspective then anyway, they also talking a about video light. I watched was where uh -huh. in the game in the game in the game in the game Whoa. And there's a little thing uh -huh. That adds another in a game. So in the game, in the game, in the game, in the game. game. You deepen the inception. So it's uh then we also talk about how uh, light years work and how many light years it takes to get places. Yeah. So, so when we have like lasers and we will uh within the book we talk about how we use laser lights or telescopes, how how high powered beams that would send signals to go light years away. And when that light year bounces off that planet and comes back. It's an aged picture, so we will never get the true uh, image of that planet. Like all of the images we've seen from other planets are those planets with hundreds of thousands, billions of years ago that are now coming oh, back to trillions of years ago. Some of them guys going far. So it's like we haven't, we don't even see like this, the flashing or the twinkling or the the sun uh, spurts uh, gases or radiation coming from the. Uh, gamma rays coming from the sun these things are extremely old they've been coming through us and then what what we think we know within the physical world as scientists or astrophysicists you know is still date of out of date so it's such a uh, these books here again are great reads 
you should check him out. Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, great, great uh, artist, a great author, uh, great orator, uh, awesome met, um, uh, astrophysicist, and we getting different levels of uh, of teaching within from one guy who was able to break it down in many ways, and that's uh, what a scholar does. You know? But basically, if you want to learn something, talk to the people who is a master in it, and they're able to you know break things down on many levels. So uh, shout out to Neil deGrasse Tyson. If you ever see this video, we appreciate your, your wisdom. Uh, we appreciate your work. And uh, we're adding it to uh, what we know what to do best. You know, uh, so I'm your brother Curtis Aru coming to you with Supreme. Yeah. RJ here. Supreme RJ. Any, any closing words you want to leave with people? No. <laughs> All right, so we'll keep you updated on... Uh, know how we how we get through this book maybe at the end we have some other surprises to, to share mm -hmm. so i will read i'm gonna read them out on something so wormholes wormholes okay i'm gonna take you out wormholes i'm gonna read wormholes before we go out so i met superman once this happened in pages of a comic book but it felt real in this particular issue starlight starbright the Man of Steel has been busy fighting off a horde of aliens on Mars when he takes a break to use his battle to adjust the League friends and fly back to Earth. All because he wants to see a star. That's my kind of superhero. I'm not familiar with Superman. He has bulletproof skin, eyes that can shoot lasers, and ability to fly, and a few other impressive abilities. More importantly, though, He's an alien. He was born on a planet called Krypton to travel and travel to Earth as an infant in a spacecraft. I was figured out where out where Superman's home actually. The writers asked me for my help in a little research. Mm -hmm. I picked my nice neighborhood in the constellation Corvus, about twenty-seven Corvus, about twenty-seven light years away from Earth. Again, the distance will take a beam of light to cover light to cover while racing across the universe for 27 years. Mm -hmm. I picked Corvus as Superman needs to travel for 27 years before reaching us. This way, the light from its final moment doesn't rise till he was adult. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we're mm -hmm. on all right. We're on page uh, 47, family, so if you want to catch up with us, this is where we at. Until next time. All right. Bye. Hmm. Three years strong radiation, electromagnetism too. The third force, yes, is gravitation, but the strongest force is me and you. Universal forces of the cosmos, universal forces, yet the power of universal forces. Epic victims, the strongest force is me and you. I said that there's weak and strong radiation, yes. electromagnetism too. The third force is gravitation, but the strongest force is me and you.